Welcome to the bridge at San Supercarne, a very beautiful three arch bridge. I'll explain how to get the difficult perspective of this bridge in the first stage in the drawing, and hopefully, through the colours I explain and through the mixing, how to build this bridge up in a hopefully an impressionistic manner. So it's not pin sharp, it's, it's all about capturing the light, the beautiful colours of the stonework the setting with the grass and the, and the wild flowers. Um, I'll hope to explain that if you keep watching this video. Thank you. Yes, yes. Paint this bridge. It's got three arches, lots of reflections, oh, yeah. okay. lots of trees. Oh. I think my focus will be the water, so I'm going to place the riverbank higher. Oh, okay. I think when you're painting a bridge from an angle like this, yeah, yeah. the best way to make sure yeah, you get it exactly. right is to look at the that whole bridge. That you need. Yeah, sure. Looking at the top of the bridge, it's, it's at a slight yeah. angle. Literally yeah. holding my pencil out. It's not an angle. But I'm going to look at the whole proportion of the bridge relative to its reflection. And so if I actually look at the left hand side of the bridge, and look at the height of it, yeah. and count it across, yes. it's three times. It's a nice feeling though, isn't it? Yeah. Three times. Did you go to the height? No. I did. I went when I was eight. One, two, three. So I'm actually drawing a perspective, like a rectangle in perspective. It's going to include the entire bridge. It's a fracture. And in fact, yes. then I've already spaced each end. And if ever you're drawing anything in perspective at an angle like a building, the way to find the middle is to put a diagonal yes. through from one corner to the other and then from that corner to the other. And what we find then is that the middle here is not halfway in terms of measurement. But that's going to be the middle of the middle arch. So I've now got to work out the proportions of each arch. Now you can just do this by eye, but there's a trick here, especially if you've got a halfway line, which you need, and that is if you draw a diagonal from this corner through the halfway line of the next vertical, it will automatically give you the position of the next vertical. And you can do this Wherever you've got a repetition in a building, such as inside a cloister of a church or just painting a cottage and you've got the windows that are evenly spaced, you can use diagonals to work out the centre and then you can use diagonals to work out the proportions. So what we've got here is an arch on the right. I'm now looking at the height of the bridge here, where the arch comes to. And there's no reflection from the right hand arch, well, it's the tiny bit here. And we've got the arch down here. The next arch, again, I'm just going to take this height across for each one. The next arch <coughs> not sure if I've got it quite flat enough. I might have I, mean, I can tweak that. I'm just going to get the feeling of the arch in place. And then this reflection comes down meets the embankment here. This arch, final arch, I see the entire reflection down here. So again, I've been looking at the, the bridge as a whole, including its reflections. I'm now looking at the inside of the each arch, where we've got some dark shadows and 
the proportion of the inside that we see is different on each arch. So just you can how much of this is the inside of the arch, and that helps me there. Again, it's reflection. And this last one, the inside goes halfway. You're actually just echoing the arch at the front and the back. So you just follow the same curve in each one. So having squeezed this massive bridge onto this small canvas, I can then sort of make little tweaks to fit everything in, including things like there's a corbel running all the way along it. I'll do that with the paint. Corbel being a, a prominent, a, a, a raised bit of masonry following the whole line of the bridge. We've got the fence and they've all got these round plates here which are also reflected and then I'm going to spend a bit of time painting the water. I might even take the embankment out of it to find that slightly closer to the stream just to give myself space for more water because when we look into the river here we actually see some of the sky reflecting and when you get a bit of sky reflecting like down here and here what we it just gives it brings the colour of the sky through the painting so if you give yourself space to reflect the sky, you'll get those colours in. Here we've got a big, I think it says Copper Beach or similar. And there's a willow here, but not yet in leaf. And we've got some there, I don't know, little ash trees or you know, up against the sky here. I'll put them in after I painted the sky. We've also got some soft trees in the distance here. So we're going to get some sky up here and hopefully we're going to get some sky reflecting down. Down the we actually see the riverbed as well, so the reflection isn't as simple as just taking this colour. But having got the drawing in place, we can now add the tree here. I'm going to move the tree a fraction. Just a big tree here, and in fact, what we've also got, we've got three trees in a row, but because I'm in this position, you only just see the edge of them, but I'm going to take the third tree in and then place that here. So we've got two big trees on the right. Might, might hint at the third one, half hidden behind this. Just, you know, you don't have to do it exactly. What you're trying to do is create an interesting painting, so feel free to move your trees around a bit. And then we've got the edge of the bridge and the embankment carrying on off to the right. And the lovely sort of grassy meadow here with daisies and buttercups, so we can get some colour in there. But we're now ready to get some paint on. Right, let's get ready to paint. I'm going to start with the sky. I'm mixing up some ultramarine and a little bit of thalo blue to give this beautiful clear blue sky with plenty of white. But by painting on this warm ground colour, it should give it an extra punch. Here we go, just mixing it up, painting it on, big flat brush. I'm ignoring the thinner trees in the middle here. I'm just going to paint through those and, and paint them on top. The big trunks here, I'm going to just avoid those as I can very easily just keep the flow of the sky running all the way through. In fact, the sky comes right down to the parapet at this point. The way you paint a sky though, um, you need to mix up enough paint to do the whole sky. Because otherwise, especially in acrylics, if you go back and mix the colour again, you, to make more colour, you'll find the colour will vary. So mix enough paint to do the whole sky in one go. Now I could do another layer later if that colour isn't perfect when I carry on, but that is a good basis for the, for the sky, a nice vibrant bright blue. So I'm now looking for where I see any colours of the sky reflected in the water. Now we don't get quite the same colour in the water, it's not quite so bright, so I'm going to remix now with a slightly deeper shade, a slightly warmer shade, so a little bit more ultramarine than Tharlo, and less white. So I'm just going to check that I'm getting the right type of blue here. And I'm, I'm, I'm 
trying to do a, really a sketch today, a quick painting, keeping it flowing. So I'm going to check the colour and then just paint big flat colours with not so much detail. So I'm looking for where the shapes reflect and where I see some blue. Now the, in, in the water the blue isn't as vibrant as this. There are other colours coming into it, especially near the embankment. But what I'm going to do is use that as a, as a base colour onto which the um, riverbed colours, the sort of khaki colours, we scumbled across the top, we flicked across the top in a minute. I'm also looking across the stream here and we see some sky reflecting quite close to the far embankment on the far side. So I'm going to put some bits of blue here. I'm not trying to get it in really thick, just to, to hint at the blue wherever I, can, wherever I see it. And then I'll build up the, the colour of the, of the river on top in a minute. So we've got the sky in place. Um, I'm going to basically paint the landscape and come back to the bridge. So we've got lots of uh, green next. So I'm, I'm using here um, a cadmium yellow with my cerulean, sorry, it's not cerulean, it's a thalo blue, which will give a really bright, a bright green. That green, on, just the, with the blue and the yellow is, is very intense. So I'm going to bring a bit of white into it in order to get enough green. And I'm going to mix, I've just, I've got, I've got the right color, but I want lots of it. So I'm just mixing lots of it. If I was doing this on a studio canvas, I'd actually mix this up in a pot. So I'd have a really big pot of green paint just to, to, to lay on. But here we go. Bright, very bright spring green colors. And at this stage, I'm just painting sections of the canvas with blocks of color. I will come back and, and I'll produce varieties and different shades and add the shadows later on. We've actually got reflections here as well. Actually, the reflection, I'm going to add a bit of blue to the reflection. The green goes darker down here. We've got green through this arch. I actually, even when I've got a big puddle of green on my palette, I, I will adjust it here and there to make it slightly yellower or slightly lighter as required. But I just use the same basic green and, and adapt it. Seeing green through the second arch, the middle arch, and some greens behind that. And seeing green through the far arch. We've actually got some green on the bridge too. A few bits of green I'll put on later on with little bits of weed growing on the side. So now we're ready to put some grass in the foreground. I'm just slightly, I'm using a big, a one inch synthetic brush to get these big flat blocks of colour in place. And I'm now adding a tiny bit of moisture to my brush. So as I put these colours on, they will flow. They'll flow into the grain of the canvas. So they sweep up here, they could go up to the top here. So at this stage in the painting, it's blocking in the sky, a bit of reflection, get all the greens in place. So you're looking at all the sort of spaces in between the trees, in between the bridge. You're looking at spaces. I'm going to bring, actually I'm, I'm bring, I brought this green over a bit too far here, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to come down lower, leave a bit more place in there for reflection. So just moving the, moving the shapes around a bit as just to help create the effect I want. Now as I bring, can come forward I'm not going to try and fill the grain of the canvas totally. Um, I'm going to let this ground colour which is basically a raw sienna wiped over thinly before I started. That ground colour will show through in a few patches to, to, to pick the type of grassy embankment we've got. So I'm moving the brush very vigorously, all different angles, deliberately sort of pushing it in every direction to create a sort of 
the sense of texture in that foreground. And because the shadow is all changing when you paint out of doors, I'm now going to place, I'm adding some more ultramarine to my mixture, so I'm going to place some shadows on the grass, coming back to those trees. Just a few shadows here and there. Just blocking in these darker shades of green where I see them. I'm probably making a bit of a mess here. My shapes aren't particularly neat. I might go down to a smaller brush in a minute, but I just want to block these colours in as, a, as an initial mark making process. And then I see some very strong shadows down here in the greens. So I've added, I've added some, I've added some more ultramarine and a little bit of burnt umber to create this particularly dark shadow in here. Right, so we're now ready to put a few shadows in here as well. So we're now ready to start painting the water, the trees and the bridge itself. So I'm just cleaning the brush up. Um, the burnt umber, I'm going to use now with a smaller flat brush. Burnt umber and some arch marine. Just to place the dark of these shadows. There are colors in these shadows inside the bridge. I'm just starting with a dark and I'll hint at those colours but actually I can use the ground colour again by using this colour diluted and you can pick up, I just rub it with my finger and work into it. It's not so dense, it's just placing the, the colour and just using the dampness of the brush to, to push the colour in and so it's not so thick and quite, quite often if you are painting the darks in a in a landscape. It's the traditional method of achieving a realistic effect is to paint shadows thinly. So diluting the colour down so whichever medium you're using, whether it's water with acrylics or a bit of terps with your oil paint. The idea is that you will see the ground colour just creeping back through these shadows. And we've got you can actually see light reflected up inside these arches where the colour of the stones show up. So don't paint the darks too thickly. Now we've got the water level sort of here. And we've got reflection down here. And again, I'm just using this a thinner mixture paint the reflection here. The same on the other side here with this bridge, this arch of the bridge, the reflection coming down in here. A lot of dark in here. So the shadows really start to create depth in the painting. And I can, whilst I've got these darks on the go, I'm going to search for them in other parts of the painting. So we've got the reflection of the bridge coming in here. We've got some dark beneath the bridge in the water. Just use it very thinly there. We've got some dark shadows in the trees. Again, just a watery solution above the bridge here some shadows in place thinly and as soon as you start placing these shadows you'll get a sense of uh, three dimensions you'll get a sense of volume the painting will start to look like there's depth there are even shadows on the bridge you can hint at so let's uh, 
put a bit more detail in the bridge. I'm using the edge of this flat brush. It should be sharp enough to give me a shadow under the stonework here. And just by constantly swinging my hand, I can get a smooth, clear line. If you struggle with this, you could use you could use a ruler. But um, sometimes that can look a little bit too fussy with a ruler. So just you know, use a ruler maybe to guide where your line is, but then finish it off without the ruler. So now we've got a bit of shape. Let's put some hint at the hint at shadows down these tree trunks. Now start looking at some of the colours in the water. And we've got this sort of khaki brown, so I'm just introducing some yellow ochre into my dark, my thin shadow colour. So I've got the burnt umber with a bit of blue in it, but now adding yellow ochre will give me these khaki shades in the water. And I might even be scumbling them across on top of the blue from earlier in a few areas. And the, the, the khaki is really where we're seeing some of the, the riverbed itself through the water. The water is crystal clear, but we're seeing these, these khaki colours with a bit of weed, a bit of some shingle and so on, and stone in the bed of the river. I'm just going to go back to my um, ultramarine with a bit of white in it. I've noticed the sky through here is a bit greyer. So this is the sky. And I'm now going to move this bit here. I've got blue and in fact it should be reflecting the um, parapet of the bridge. And then which ends about here. And then we've got green. So I've just got to put some of the bridge into place here. The actual colour of the masonry is um, lovely mellow stonework. I'm using cadmium orange with my yellow ochre and then we'll get the colour of the masonry and we'll also get the colour of it where it reflects down here. So I'm just overpainting a bit of blue where I put it a little bit too far up and that gives me a good masonry colour. The actual the orange or the orangey shade of the sienna showing through is actually quite a good base for this bridge colour and I'll let that show in quite a few areas but I'll also use this yellow ochre and um, there's a bit of white in it too but the yellow ochre mixed into a little bit of cadmium orange try and capture the warmth of the stonework and where I've overpainted this arch by accident with a little bit of the green, I can just push it back into place. So just giving a second chance to get the arch of the bridge about right. So where I put the shadow again, you can sharpen it up with the colours on top. And if you want to paint smooth stonework, make sure you've got plenty of paint on your brush. Nice sort of undiluted paint. This is just straight from the tube. There's the colours mixed together and that way I can paint with a sort of buttery mixture which will flow all the better. So if you haven't got enough paint on your brush you'll never, you won't fill the grain. You won't be able to get this textural effect. And I keep reloading the brush with thick paint And you can, every time you do it and add a bit more paint, you can refine the, uh, the drawing from earlier. I'm just following this 
top of the bridge along here with a bit more um, a bit more paint and just to, just because it's really sharp I've just moistened the brush slightly so I can get the top edge of the parapet nice and sharp but I'll probably go back over it with thicker paint um, more than once to try and get the the strength of the stonework and you of course you can take this color down into the reflection of the bridge as well down here so we've got everything very simply placed but we need to refine it we need to sharpen up the structure um, I'm not going to do that until I've got some of the remaining ingredients in place there's some thicker paint here in the reflections, but dabs of thicker paint to capture the effect of stone. And of course the stone is catching the light, so the thicker I go here, and the thicker I pick out slightly different shades each time I mix it, if you paint in the direction of the stones themselves with thicker strokes of paint, you will start to suggest all the different colours we see in the brickwork and the stonework. Well, actually, no brickwork, I beg your pardon, in the stonework. So again, another layer of paint here, more yellow ochre, bits of cadmium orange, more white. And I'm now going to put in a bit thicker bits of paint on top of here. And don't worry if you overpaint your shadows by mistake. It's very simple to get place them back. If you've got a um, Another brush to hand, let's just get a smaller flat brush. Spread these brushes out, I can choose this one. I've got here a very small brush. Just a little, or oh, it's not even a quarter of an inch. But it's a sort of brush you can go back with and just push, put the shadows back into place. Maybe a bit of water required. Right. Let's paint some of the trees in the background. I'm going over from these uh, synthetic brushes now to a hog brushes, which are this type of brush. This is a, a sort of worn out filbert about, I'm not sure what number this is, six or seven, anyway it's um, just over a quarter of an inch wide, about eight millimetres wide, but this is a perfect brush, especially it's slightly worn out, it's the best brush to paint um, twiggery and the effect of um, branches and so on, because what I'm going to do is just blur the, over the top of the sky here, I'm going to paint this top line of the trees, you get um, broken patches of colour. So you don't have to paint every twig, you can just paint little patches of colour and you start to get the colours in the tree. In fact, I'm seeing a bit more sky showing through these trees, so I'm quite tempted to just before I do any more of the trees, I'm going to just put a bit more of my sky colour into the gaps, slow it down. So I've just run out of my, my Tharlow blue Maybe a bit more ultramarine. Topping up my palette here. And the sky down, um, the lower down we go in the sky, so here, it's not quite mixed in better. Is it? Well, as I should, but yeah, sorry, it's a bit patchy, but better. I'm just going to put some patches of blue down here. I'll let that dry. It's quite thin, this paint. I'll let it dry, and then I'll bring the trees back on top. Just want to give the idea of the sort of thinner bits of foliage. Maybe a few patches over here, too. Right. Um, whilst that's drying, I'm going to use my tree colour. A sort of khaki tree colour. So I've got yellow ochre, 
there's actually a little bit of burnt sienna, burnt umber in it too this sort of color and I'm going to just go over the some of the bits of blue down here which aren't so bright we've got bits of riverbed showing through we've got bits of tree reflecting I'm just putting in sort of broken patches of colour. I'm looking at the river and deciding how dark I need to go down here, but I think I think I've got it dark enough. I'm going to actually put in some paler strokes on top of the shadows I placed earlier. I'm just using yellow ochre, a little bit of burnt umber, hints of a tiny bit of orange just to warm it up. I'm seeing some slightly warmer colours and again just bring it, bringing in some of these broken patches on top of the the dark colour just building up thicker strokes where the light's reflecting in this water strokes and there you go. I'm going to put in some colour here behind. I think I'm, go I'm going to take some of this green back. I've got it coming across a little bit too far. The advantage of acrylics is you can overpaint an, an area like that so quickly when it, as it dries. building up layers and I may go back and put a stronger colour on there again in a few more minutes we'll see and then this arch here yeah, just bringing this shadow around a bit more there's a little breeze that's come across now which is providing a, some blurring in the water maybe this shape is a bit too defined or maybe use the breeze to sort of soften the line of the bridge here a little make it a little less severe and I need some more paint I'm running out of white I'm sure you'll find this with the critics that the uh, paint dries out so you can't put as much water or put as much paint on the palette as you as you need it for the whole painting because it will dry it before you get there so you have to keep remixing so I'm just mixing up now a lighter shade of what I was just doing with this sort of khaki in the water the breeze has produced some paler ripples so I'm going to put some strokes in here a bit more light Colors above. So thicker and thicker paint, more white paint, more yellow ochre with a little bit of cadmium orange. With the sun on the on the bridge, the stonework is particularly beautiful. So I'm just going to some brighter patches in and also let's put some shadows or some there's some discolored stonework and there's some that's following the arches around so I'm gonna put in a few darker patches of stone using <coughs> a bit of burnt sumber, a little bit of ultramarine. A bit of weathering as the stone works discolored. I might go back and put more strokes in with a different brush later. Different size strokes will 
help create this effect. And now I'm going to go through the arches and put a bit of sunlight on the greens through here, adding a bit of yellow. Just again takes the eye through. got the greens through the arch here, we've also got the bridge itself is showing a bit of a shadow on the water through here and we've got impale ochre so white and yellow ochre it, it's inside these it's the water inside the arches it's got to be slightly grayer than on the bridge a little bit of blue in it. And I'm just adding a bit more white, just lightening this. Comes up high here, just lightening this color as it goes through the arch. Hopefully we'll just take your eye through. There are some trees here catching the light. Put some light strokes in, put some grayer strokes behind them. Just trying to indicate the riverbank as it goes on through the picture. This is where you can get a smaller brush. I've got a little tiny number one or two brush here where I can put in some extra tree trunks and tree through here too. Some other little shades of green that are sort of catching the catching the light. Let's get back to these trees now. That's all dried off, so I can come back with my. I mean, these winter trees are really just a pale yellow ochre with a little bit of ultramarine to grey the ochre. You've got to be very careful here. If you overdo the blue, you'll lose the colour of the ochre, which you want. But now I've got that sky in here, I can then I can overwork it with little bits of pale ochre. I'm just changing the shade here and then I, make, I put one colour on, then I mix a paler shade and put another colour on and so on. And this is just very sort of subtle colours here. So the change the spectrum. I'm just building up the colours in the distant trees here. What I'm, do, I'm using the same colours all the time but just slightly changing. Every time I go back to the palette I add a little bit of a paler shade or then go, I'll go backwards and just a darker shade. So I'm just building a light dark to try and suggest the texture of these, these thin trees yet to burst into leaf. But nonetheless, I, I think that's why we're seeing the same colour in the water, this khaki colour reflecting in the water. Also getting... Um, It's a green reflecting in the water too over here and here.
So I'm going to put some tree trunks in the foreground though, just to, as they come down a bit lower. This tree here comes down right down to here. And I've just used the same colour, but add a bit of white to it. The big tree trunk here. Another one behind it, coming in behind it. And another one over here, leaving a little bit of sky. A little bit of sky in between them. I might just thin this tree down a bit. I might lose that first bit of the painting. And maybe widen this one a little bit more. And this is just a sort of an initial cutter. I will add texture and shadow to these trees. Going back to the bridge behind her. Complete the right parapet of the bridge here. a lot of trees on the other side of the bridge. I'm hinted at in the distance here, just again trying to create contrast with different shades. This is these distant trees, it's all about the texture of the canvas and just building up layers. I've now got a copper beach on, I think it's a copper beach on the left. But it's, it's the colour of a copper beech anyway, which I'm just going to bring that colour in here. It's rather attractive and it comes all the way over to the middle of this pier. And I'm using a, a red oxide colour here. You could get this colour by using crimson with a little bit of ultramarine in it and some brown. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and give it a little bit more of a, just want to make it a bit more vibrant, so I'm adding a bit of cadmium red to my colour. I'll need some more burnt umber, so I'm topping that up. And I might even need some cadmium orange, but I'll come to that when I need it. So let's just add a little bit of cadmium red to this tree colour. Yeah, just a little bit more lift. Take it up here. And I'm trying to make a slightly brighter shade. So I've added a bit of white and yellow as well, just to produce a few little highlights for the sun's picking up on the colour. Just So I've got two or three shades going on which gives it a little bit more shape. And underneath that tree, or as it gets close to the edge, um, it's going into dark shadow so I'm just adding a bit of ultramarine and a little patch of um, burnt umber. This is, I did put some dark in earlier but I'm just reinforcing it. Very, it's, if you've got shadows and can exploit them, it always gives extra depth. There's some more shadows over here too. So when you've got your, remember when you've got the right colour, 
you can always use it for other areas and just sharpening up where I put the shadow on the bridge it's not quite as sharp as I want it so again I can build that up with a bit more a bit more colour and the same underneath this reflection I've got this shadow here, I'm looking along the edge of the river, more shadows down here too. some willow tree up here which I'm just going to see if this leftover brown with a bit of ochre in it will produce a shape here and there's a, well, there's a, there's a I think it looks like a fir tree or pine tree behind it up here which is going to give me a dark so I'm now mixing some ultramarine with a little bit of the cadmium yellow and some brown in it I want to make a very dark green just to put a tree right through here. Just to create an extra dark part of the painting. To the left. Sort of strengthens up the composition a bit. I might have exaggerated that, but I think it, um, it's there. It's, I'm, not, um, I'm not entirely inventing it. There's some greens, patches of pale yellowy green through here as well. So. A bit of dark and some brighter colours too. It all adds to the, to the effect. This is when I can go back and add different shades of the green I put in right at the beginning. So I've waited all this time. Just all helps to to give extra form to the to the painting. And this green is by adding more yellow to the green. The green mixer. Remember, we're using the cyan blue and a bit of yellow and white, but more yellow and white. I can suggest the um, the uh, where the grass is and the the green will be next to the river, catching more light. So by starting with a deeper green and then coming in with this paler green, it will add. Hopefully, add some sunlight to the foreground. I can do it in the foreground here as well. And again, you can that's another little trick. You can do lots of different things with the brush. You can roll it around like this if you want to create sort of more of a meadow look with different flowers and so on in it. Just sort of scooping the brush around. You know, you go with the flow. I'm going to put in a few little lighter patches of green down here as well. I'm not putting this on solidly, this is called scumbling, but I'm just putting in broken colour. And it's hopefully bringing the greens here forward. And at the same time creating texture in them to suggest grass and, and so on. And we've got buttercups too, so by putting in some very, I've mixed white into my cadmium yellow, very light to bright yellow. I mean, I've got groups of buttercups I can use the brush to paint sort of clumps of buttercup 
and when I've got little individual buttercups which I've got here and there I will use at the end I might use the, here we go the actual brush just the single flowers and again when I'm painting these I don't just keep the same yellow I keep just changing it making it deeper here lighter in other areas and there are there are, there are lots of yellow flowers as well as the dandelions but there are daisies as well and it just just brings a lift to the foreground here so put a few little white parts if you you know overdo it it's not a problem because you can just go back and paint more grass Hopefully, creates a bit more texture in the foreground. Going back into my green, I'm just making, painting a bit of a darker green into the colours back here. A bit of dark under this arch. Oh, I know exactly where my trees are going, and of course the trees themselves will have some dark on them. One we've got we've got a little bit of shadow on the left, but we've also got texture. We've got sort of greeny moss on the right. So the moss on the right is quite dark. So here we go like this. That's a bit bright, let's go in a bit darker. Uh, I'll come back and refine the trees, but again, it just creates a bit more structure. I've got different shades on this brush. As I turn the brush, I'm getting lights and darks with the same brush. Is a bit more solid. Shadow from the tree, right? The dark shadow down in there. and uh, I paint me is you can do glazing so you can this is quite watery paint I'm just picking up a few different colors in my stonework when I've got those bits of green left on the brush and it's just very just watery paint basically so it shows up now but it will dry in and produce quite a subtle mark it won't be too it won't be as strong as it looks right now
again just widening this arch a little bit on the inside. No. Oh dear, an accident in the in the artist camp. coming in stronger now with the reflection of the bridge and the bridge itself just coming up with some brighter sunnier colors not over everywhere but just I'm going to reinforce the parapet here Again, every time you put in these sharper, brighter colours, you get the greater depth. We've got trees going up here now as well, so I'm going to go back to my ochre palette up around here and just see if I can suggest this. Great. And what I'm doing here is I'm holding the brush sideways, and I'm, I haven't got a lot of paint on the brush, but I've just got enough to produce the effect of the twiggery, as I call it of the trees in the distance here. Um, the plan is to um, then just draw the trunks in with um, using the detail brushes or uh, some liquid in the detail brushes. I'm just going to add more colour in through here. More colour into here. Just trying to catch a bit more contrast. I need some. I'm just putting another layer on some of my greens as well now, so I'm running out of them. Um, my Thalo blue. thing I like to do with them um, when I paint trees is where you see sky coming through the trees to paint the sky back into the trees so I've just mixed up my I'm looking at my blue I put in earlier and because I was matching the color I, I failed to realize that the color would dry a little bit darker so I'm just going back in now with some lighter patches at the sky in between the branches of the trees, but I'm just going to put in more than you see and then scumble the tree colours back over them. Just, I just like this idea of seeing some sky through the trees. So, so just a smaller brush there just to get that effect. The same here, some sky. Now I can let that dry and come back to it. I'm just now I'm waiting for that dry. I'm going to remix some of my my greens with the brighter 
the brighter greens. So there's a bit more yellow and white in, so I've got the greens in here. And I want to, let's follow that through into the reflections down here. I think they're a bit dark. And they look a bit dark because I've lightened the greens above them. <coughs> and of course the other thing I can now do is lighten the um, colours in the stonework. So I'm, I'm mixing up some stonework colour here without the yellow ochre. I'm just using a bit of, a little bit of red tiny bit of yellow and I'm using my another flat brush just to go into it and sharpen up the stonework with a few more highlights this is a very pale it's almost like a putty color I'm painting with the bridge ends on the right I think we need a bit more contrast so I'm just I'm just going into my brown over here so there's a little edge to the parapet I'm going to put my shadow next to that and above the road and then I'm going to take a bit of that shadow up into the trees I've already sketched it there you go it does provide the structure Now, a few little shadows amongst the foliage here. Again, just very faint. And just to show you how, just to show you how um, the I can now use a detail brush with a good end on it to um, pick out the trunks of some of these trees in the distance. And if we look at the trunks, they've got some of the big branches and trunks are quite dark, some are light, so I'm going to start with the dark. Top up my dark palette with burnt umber as ever. I'm going to mix that burnt umber up with a little bit of, of blue. It doesn't want to be, because it's in the background of the painting, it doesn't want to be as dark as the shadows in the foreground, so I add a little bit of white to my brown and blue mixture. But I want it to be the the darker shade of the of the um, the trunks. So I'm going to use my thin brush. I'm using my finger to steady it. I'm using a little bit of water on the brush, and I'm not doing continuous lines here. I'm just doing some broken shapes, and these are the darker parts of the tree trunk. If you make a splurge, don't worry, you can probably use a tissue very quickly to take the colour back again. And I've got branches going to the right. In the shadow I've got... I've got branches going to the left. They're crossing over each other. weaving in and out so you don't have to do continuous lines you can sort of stop and start you start here you leave a gap carry on but what you're going to need to do next is as you connect them up with the paler shade which is this sort of putty color um, and we've got the sunlight coming from our right so what we can connect these up with some lighter patches but also you can connect up the gaps with these lighter colours in the trees. 
it's pretty much the same color as we I did the twiggery with but occasionally the sun's on these trunks and uh, it's really catching the light so I'm exploiting that contrast and I'm constantly just putting a little bit of water with the brush not much just to get it to flow Even though I only mix the relatively grey shade for the dark, you can see it stands out pretty well. It's, it's quite sufficient, to, it's quite dark enough. I spend a little bit of time on these, just connecting these up, and it's, it's all about suggestion here. can use other tools to do this such as oh, the end of a nib would do it or the, the, uh, sometimes um, the back end of a brush you know if you've got the thin there, tip of the brush you can even put the paint on with this end of a brush and do little broken strokes it's quite quite nice way of working but this is the stage which you're actually allowed to use or <laughs> allowed in my book to put in some detailed strokes. On the on the right over here we've got not amongst this group we've got a few little darker patches so again I'm just gonna use the thin brush and overpaint those patches of sky that I put back in. Watery paint so again it looks dark now but it won't be quite as dark as it dries bit too strong so I just smudge it out with a finger. Same there. Same there. A bit of finger smudging is quite effective where you want a little less focus. You can do the same thing coming down into the woodland behind the bridge here. Just a few little darks now amongst the little trees. Same down here more shadows here and there. And I can use, when I'm painting through here, I still use the shadows to sharpen up where my stone colours have gone a bit blurry at the edge. Again, just a little bit of water on the brush, you can get a sharper edge. And you can do the same thing, put some staining on the edge of the bridge with some little broken strokes. And of course, if you do anything pronounced and up here, you have to do the same in the reflection down here. Just echo it. Make sure the reflection is doing the same. I've run out of yellow ochre, so I'm just seeing if I can mix a similar color with my um, my cadmium red and my cadmium yellow, adding a little bit of blue. And then I'm looking to create another pale, pale colour in the stonework. And again, wherever you're in the first stage of the painting and looking a bit too rough, you can now go back and sharpen up all these all these areas which need more clarity. Like here, I was a bit heavy handed with my shadows. Well, I'm going to repaint them now using a liquidy solution. So, 
want more precision, just remember to put, add a bit more liquid. Little bits of green I've noticed in the stream here in the river. Paint now. And it adds the suggestion of more. This column here, the or plinth rather, is dark on the side, so I'm just reflecting the dark from above. Same over here. It's pretty down to taste how much detail you want to keep adding to a scene like this, but um, but I like to add a few features that make it more personal. You know, some other some brighter colours on the stone here and there. I haven't done much with this colour over here. I'm going to get the yellow ochre out. I think that's a quick way to get this bridge looking more convincing. Um, but I'm still using this little brush just to add those final shadows. The shadow over here. Even with a little brush, sometimes it's difficult to get the precision you need. But the answer is, you know, if you can't get it right with the deep colour, you can then trim it back with the next colour. You can normally normally get to the level of detail by building up the lights, the darks, and then going back to the lights and darks again, and so on. That's got more of the detail in. <laughs> I forgot to put the reflection of that in down here. Just going back again, you can see all the layers that as they dry, you get a chance to have another go, go back with another layer and another layer. And each time you go back, the colour is a little bit different, and that's fine because you get a little bit more contrast, a little bit more light in those trees in the distance, a little bit more foliage and twiggery on, on this area. painted the uh, the trees in the background earlier I put the trunks in so I'm now going to just go back over those with the same color uh, well a variation on the color I painted initially for the twigs I'm just mixing the color getting only a tiny amount on the brush and then I can just scumble over what I've just done and soften down where the branches are looking a bit busy 
and maybe a slightly deeper shade here and there, just putting a bit of burnt umber into that mixture. So I can put a few darker areas into the into the distant trees. Well, the wind's getting up. Float my canvas away a little bit so the wind's less likely to catch it. Just reinforcing some of the reflections. And I'm going to put a little bit more, there's a bit more light playing across the surface of the water now. So let's see if I can get it with the, some thin strokes in the foreground here. Uh, this may seem a bit too strong. I'm just, I'm, it's thin paint, and it should it should just uh, dry in with a little bit less. Just stroking it across, very very thin. Just some other shapes reflecting. It's a bit too light. So I'm using thicker and thicker paint here. And with the thick paint it's great to just add these little sharper bits and little edges and some stones at the edge of the our bank here, add a bit of contrast. And most of them have got shadows beneath, so I'm going to go back dark underneath them. shadows, there's a bit more shadow in here now, it just helps to create structure.
So I think I'm really doing the finishing touches now rather than overwork it. But um, this is the sort of painting I expect I'll put in the side in the studio. I'll give it a day or so, and I might, I might just add a few more details in the stones and so on. But essentially, what you see is what you get. <laughs> 